What's on ladies and gentlemen, my name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to be taking a look at another very, very exciting new battle card coming in wave 2 of the Transformers trading card game, Rise of the Combiners, and I'll tell you what ladies and gentlemen, this one, when I first looked at it, I was like, meh, and then the more I looked at it, I was like, ooh, maybe, and now I'm left with an impression whereby it's clearly a fun card. And it's clearly got some uses. But I'm not sure how good it's going to be. It was revealed by the lovely folks over at Vector Sigma. A great website for the Transformers TCG. Make sure you're checking them out. I say this in all these videos. Where these cards are revealed, spoiled, call them what you will. From other content creators, still hate that phrase. Just make sure you give them a little bit of love. Make sure you go out and check that website. Click the link in the description. It will take but a second. So inverted then. What does inverted actually do? Well, the first thing to mention here is that it's got a white and a green icon. This is a very nice combination of icons indeed. The white icon says that the first time you hit a white icon when attacking or defending, you flip two more battle cards. That's awesome. The green icon is a new one in Wave 2, and it says that after the battle, you may discard a card from your hand and put a card with a green icon that you flipped into your hand. Cool. It basically means that it is much, much easier to find this card. The chances of you having this card when you need it, being able to find it at the right time, are much, much higher. And that is a very good thing. So we like the pips, but what does a card do? Well, it's a utility upgrade, and it reads, When the upgraded character is battling, each orange icon you flip becomes a blue icon, and each blue icon you flip becomes an orange icon. It's called inverted. It inverts your flips. That kind of makes sense. And the first thing that's got to come to mind here for most people is double pips. So if we look at Wave 1, for instance, we did have a couple of battle cards that gave us double orange pips. We'll just focus on the orange for the time being. So we had Improvised Shield, which gave you Tough 1, which is fine, but it gave you double orange pips. And Peace Through Tyranny, which let you KO one of your own characters with six stars or more, but then take an extra turn, but was largely played for the double orange pips. That's all we had. Coming in Wave 2, there's Mounted Missiles that I was lucky enough to reveal, link in the description, which also has a double orange pip, but it costs a star to use. So I'm thinking, right, well, with Inverted, you can just have another double orange pip because you can play a double blue pip card, something like Security Checkpoint, and then all of a sudden, yay, it's a double orange. The problem is, of course, that it's not really... Because if you're attacking with inverted, then your double orange become double blues. So even though your double blues become double orange, it's not helping you out so much. So we need to rethink a little bit. In theory, this can give you more doubles. In reality, it's going to be extremely difficult to hit the double orange when you're not having inverted and the double blues when you are having inverted. But one of the things I think that works beautifully with this card is the new keyword skill plan. Now, we've seen two characters so far that have this, and they're both incidentally combiners. We've got Torox, the Predacon, whereby when you flip into bot mode, you draw a card, and then you have plan one. You get to put one card from your hand on top of your deck. But then we've got Dinobot Snarl, which gives you plan two when you flip it into bot mode, though you don't get to draw a card. So here, we're getting a little bit closer with inverted. We're thinking, all right, what we can do is have a mixture of blue and orange icons and then take advantage of plan with inverted to really start making some hay here. It essentially allows you to play a mixture of orange and blue icons, but make it more likely you're hitting the right ones at the right time. You can basically use blue icons while attacking. And I think it is a mixture of blue and orange here, which is one of the main uses for this. But if you're playing some blue and some orange and you sometimes want to use blue as orange and orange as blue, I think having to use something like plan is probably going to be the best way forward here, or at least one of the best ways. But there is another use for this, and that is if you're using a defensive deck, the way you're largely using blue icons, 
but then you occasionally want to attack. Here's the thing. If you're playing a largely blue deck and you want to attack occasionally, the chances are when you are attacking, you're not going to be hitting many orange icons and you're not going to have much of an attack. So that's where Pierce comes in. Pierce basically guarantees a number of damage equal to your Pierce or attack, whichever is lower. So if you've got Pierce 4 and attack 6, you're doing a minimum 4 damage, though you could do more. And if you've got Pierce 6 and attack 4, you guarantee 4 damage because unfortunately your Pierce does not allow you to do more than your attack. So what you can do here is take advantage of Pierce and basically go, right, I'm playing a blue deck, I'm playing a defensive deck, but every so often I want to be able to attack. So if I'm working with things like Pierce here, then I can take advantage of this and my blue icons become red icons and now I'm rolling because now I am upping my attack. So let's take something like Megatron. The common Megatron from Wave 1, Megatron Decepticon Leader. This, when you are in bot mode, has a Pierce of 3. So you've got Pierce 3, Attack 4, you're fine. You're guaranteeing free damage. But let's say you put a Fusion Cannon and Megatron on. Well, now all of a sudden, you're up to Pierce 6, but you've only got an Attack of 5. And if you're not playing any orange icons... You're not getting your attack any higher, which is where Inverted comes in. You're playing a blue deck, just in this example, and Fusion Cannon and Megatron itself, incidentally, has a blue icon. So what you do is you play Inverted, and now all of a sudden your blue icons are orange icons, and your attack gets a little bit higher. It can be the difference between winning and losing. If you need to do 6 damage to win the game, and you've got Pierce 6 but attack 5, playing Inverted will win you the game. And I get the feeling that Inverted is not going to be an every deck card. I've just given you a slightly convoluted example where it would work and where it could help you. And I think that's kind of where Inverted is. I think Inverted is going to be absolutely great in very specific situations, but I don't think it's going to be great in every situation. I'll give you one more great example of it, though, Arcee. Arcee is one of the characters that I really think can love this. Arcee has Pierce equal to her attack. So you can play a defensive deck, and you can play Arcee, which is only a five-cost character, and you don't need to put a whole bunch of orange icons in. You can still be playing a defensive deck with a whole bunch of blue icons, but you whack an inverted on RC, and all of a sudden, you're actually being able to do a fair amount of damage, whereas you might go, oh, I've got five stars left, I want to put RC in, but I can't put RC in because I'm not playing any orange icons, I'm going to get PS1 every turn. I do think this is going to be a good card, but I think it's going to be a good card in very specific matchups. The good news is your icons are helping out greatly here. Because even if you're not using it in the way you want to, you've still got a white icon. So you're still flipping over extra cards when you attack or defend. That's great. And it's got a green icon, which means that it's fairly likely that you will be able to find this when you want to find it. If you're only playing kind of one or two copies of this and hoping you don't flip it while attacking or defending, hoping you draw into it, that can get pretty awkward pretty quickly. But if you're playing it with a green icon, which you have to because it's got a green icon, all of a sudden it is significantly more likely that you're going to be able to find this on the turn you want to. Draw into it, play it. Flip it while attacking, use the green icon and play it. Flipping while defending, use the green icon and play it. And that's what I really like. That's why I think this gets up into good card territory, without the green icon, I would be much, much less of a fan of it. Of course, it is a utility. So if you're in a Dinobot deck, you're probably going to be wanting to play Jaws of Steel, 
that might be an issue. Maybe in an Insecticon deck you want to play Bug Bomb, although to be fair that does have blue icons and Insecticons do tend to go a bit aggro. Or maybe in just a Specialist deck or a deck playing Specialist, you've got another card that I was lucky enough to reveal, Field Communicator, which can let you play extra cards not from your hand, which is absolutely wonderful. There is a lot to like about this card. And I should mention, it is a double pip card. And I mentioned these in a couple of videos recently, but Windblade. Windblade has a great skill in alt mode, which says, when you flip to this mode, reveal the top card of your deck. If it has battle icons of at least two different colors, you may play it. Well, that's got two different, so that's going to be good. Although it is a utility, and it is a specialist, so there is an argument that Field Communicator is a better use here, even though you can't play it with the skill. And we also need to mention Slipstream, one of the convention exclusive cards. It's worrying me how many videos I'm mentioning her in lately, in that she seems to be getting a lot better in Wave 2, and it's an expensive convention exclusive card, which makes me a little bit sad. But Slipstream gets plus free attack if you flip at least three different battle icons, and if you flip this while attacking, you're going to get three different battle icons. Because when you flip it, it's a white icon, so you get to flip two more. And between the other three cards you're flipping other than this, you're probably going to see one blue or one orange icon. So yeah, I think it's fairly safe to assume that Slipstream is going to get the bonus here. Those cards will work very nicely purely because of the pips here. There's a lot to like about this card, but I'm not entirely unconvinced. If it just turned orange pips into blue pips, it would be nuts. If it just turned blue pips into orange pips, it would be nuts. But that's the reason it doesn't. At the end of the day, it's an awkward card with specific uses and a great pip combination, and I expect it to see play in a bunch of decks. But ladies and gentlemen, I expect to know what you think about this, and you can do so by letting me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But please do remember the most important thing as always, be nice, would ya? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Transformers and other games. But by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays. <laughs>